What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher. Today I'm going to get back on this 1931 Model A Roadster. For those of you who don't know, we've done a full bead rolled floor in this car, custom inner structure. We've done a ton of work so far and, uh, and the car itself is a 31 Model A Roadster high boy on deuce rails. So we've got 32 Ford rails underneath it. This is a Brizio chassis. I believe it's pinched in the front for a Model A. That's something that has to be done as you pinch the rails in the front. And uh, basically, I would like to get the metalwork finished up on this car. So in this video, I'm gonna tackle installing 32 Ford grill shell and making a custom hood from scratch for it to fit it to that Model A body. That is the plan. Stick with us. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's make a hood. All right, so I picked up a couple things from Speedway to help me out here. So we've got an aluminum radiator. It's already meant for a 32 Ford grill shell, meaning it's got the mounts on it. The bottom tabs are not yet drilled. So I picked up a, uh, a mount kit with some stainless springs and nice bolts here, a couple rubber pads. We've got the uh, hood rods here. I'm not sure if they're gonna be too long or not. I might have to thread them a little deeper, but they look like they have a lot of threads on there. So I think we're gonna be okay with that. And then I've got a stock 32 Ford grill shell, just an aftermarket one. I do have some plans to make this different than a 32 Ford. We are going to take some styling cues from another car and incorporate them into the grill shell and the dash of this car. Here's a hint, not happening in this video, but uh, one center gauge that has everything in it. What car could we be taking cues from? Hmm, what might I be doing to that grill shell? Hmm, anyway, for this video, we are going to focus on installing this radiator, this grill, and making a custom hood. So, first things first, let's get this radiator on to that chassis. Okay, a couple things I noticed right off the bat. When I open the package, it's got a kind of like a faux radiator top that would normally stick through a factory deuce grill to put on like the top cap of the radiator so that it looks factory. Well, we don't have a hole in our grill shelf for that, nor do we really want to have that feature of adding that center cap popping out of the grill shell. So this in turn does not fit on. It doesn't slide down far enough to access the, uh, the mounting holes. And so I'm gonna have to cut that off. One other thing that I should mention is that right now, I don't exactly know where these foot pads sit. This is an aftermarket chassis. There are variables there. I noticed there are, you know, like the frame isn't a perfect, perfect frame. The top of the frame you can tell is kind of tipped up a little bit. It's not dead perpendicular to the sides. And these tabs hit the frame and they don't quite sit onto the mount. Now, whether or not they need to sit onto the mount, we don't exactly know because that grill is not mocked up on there. So I'd like to get this grill bolted nicely to the radiator and fitting well, and then I'll be able to see whether or not I can space that up so that the bottom tabs clear the top of the frame or Perhaps they need to be sunken in. So I'm not quite sure. That's what I'm gonna find out next by getting this mocked up onto the radiator. And then we'll be able to see whether or not that height is gonna matter.
Okay, so hiccup number one. <laughs> Even though this radiator and this grill shell both came from Speedway Motors, same place, obviously different manufacturers, but this is technically, well not technically, it really is directly made to mount a 32 grill shell. Why don't they fit? That's right, they don't fit. So right now I've got bolts in the bottom tabs, both sides, and they line up okay. Now the top ones, as you can see, they are off by about a half an inch, but I cannot get them there. And the reason being is that this radiator is touching inside this grill shell. I mean, there's an unforeseen problem. That's what happens when you're using aftermarket parts. There's, uh, there's always gonna be some kind of fitment issues. So I think that what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to pull this apart and I'm gonna have to shave down the tank. Another option would be to lower the radiator in the grill shell, but once again, we don't know how high that grill shell is gonna be against the cowl, whether or not we can even do that. So what I prefer to do is I'm gonna shave the tank. Um, there is some unground weld, like some bubbly weld right on the corner there that is touching. That is what's hitting is the welds on the tank. So I'm, I do have to grind it down a little bit, so I might actually have to re-weld it up as well. Um, if I end up having to grind it too far. So I just wanted to show you that that's like, that's just what happens when you're building hot rods. There's always stuff like that where, you know, two manufacturers don't have the same jigs, the same clearances, and the parts don't fit together. So got that piece cleaned off the top. Um, I'm using 36 grit Cubitron Rolox. I, I cut it, I cut the weld down with a 36 grit first um, until it's close to the base material, but not touching. And then I go to an 80 grit and I just burn just the weld down. I like using a new disc when I do that so that I can just, you know, as soon as the weld gets taken off, you know, it touches the parent metal and that's it. Um, and then I go to an 80 grit on my DA sander and that's what I get the nice finish with. So pretty simple, 36, 80 and 80. Cubitron purple discs is what I like to use. If anybody's looking for good grinding discs, these are the ones I've mentioned them all the time. It's just because I love them, not because they pay me, because they don't. <laughs> These are very expensive, but I'm telling you they are worth buying because they last about three times longer than, uh, than any other disc, which makes you know a disc that's almost double the price still cheaper.
All right, so got the grill finally bolted to the radiator. We had to clearance that a little bit. I'm definitely gonna have to weld those up. I did grind quite a bit, so I'm going to weld those corners up. Um, right now I've just got just one of these stainless hood rods kind of <laughs> Mickey Mouse on there. They're actually far too long. I bought them for 32 to 36 Ford. This is obviously a Model A, but I thought that uh, there could be a length difference on the 32 rails, but uh, there isn't. So I'm gonna have to shorten down those, which is fine. There's actually way too much thread on these anyway. Um, so I'm gonna be able to shorten them up, thread them down a little bit, but uh, that's neither here nor there. The issue now is that we are definitely hitting. You see this? Um, this is what I was talking about before. We're gonna have to trim that for sure for the frame rail. Uh, we can't even sit onto the rubbers and we do need to sit onto the rubbers. I can just tell by sight lining it that this grill is sitting a little bit too high, probably about the amount that we can drop by trimming those tabs. So I'm gonna trim the tabs and then we are gonna mount the hood rods and we're gonna do all of our final measuring and, uh, and make sure that everything is straight and square before we pattern to make our hood.
we are at a very crucial time in measurements right now. Right now, the body to the chassis could have wiggle room. We, I've already squared that, so I'm actually quite, quite confident on that measurement. But the grill itself to the radiator can have wiggle room. The radiator to the chassis can have wiggle room. These hood rods have wiggle room. So all those things have to be set up. It's not just bolt these things down and it's where it's gonna be. Um, there is, like I say, wiggle room. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna measure from the bottom of the cowl along this cowl line, something that's the same on both sides, to the bottom of the grill. And then once this is square on both sides, this lower measurement, I can tighten down these sprung bolt mounts to the radiator. Then the next thing I've got to look at is the top of the grill. Is this top area of the bead, is that the same distance away? And I bet you it won't be. And I won't be able to adjust it down there. It'll be the hood rods and it could be slotting holes slightly from where the tin mounts to the radiator. These are all variables in aftermarket parts that we cannot trust like an original part. This grill to this radiator, like you saw already, they didn't quite fit because of clearances inside. Well, who's to say that that bolt is perfect to that radiator that's gonna be, you know, perfect to this body. So um, we've got to look at all those things, make sure all those measurements are right. And once we can be confident in all these variables that they are square to this cowl, this car, then we'll be ready to make our template for the hood. Because if any of those were off, the hood's gonna be off too.
Okay, so I got the template laid out. I just did a little bit of the dirty finger template to feel where the bead is here. Um, what I'm looking for most of all is just how tight this paper fits down. That's what's gonna make the difference. That's why I've got these relief cuts here because the cowl starts to come up, it tapers up. So my paper would not have sat all the way down to give an accurate template. So I've marked out where the bead is gonna be for the body line where the bottom of my body line is, front and back. Also marked out some of the radiuses according to my radius gauge. These are just kind of guidelines that I can transfer onto the actual piece of metal so I know where the rolls are gonna be. 36 uh, inch right here, but then when it gets flatter, my gauge doesn't go that flat, nor do my dies. So I, I think I'll probably just be able to do that by hand. But um, I'm ready to take it off now. I just wanted to show you exactly how it all fits. I've got these done in two halves. This is also strategic just so that I can compare both sides to make sure that they are the same or extremely close to it. So I've got both sides done. I am going to extend this past the bottom of the body line by a little bit and then probably hem the edge. And by that, I mean, I'm just going to uh, roll the edge over a little bit to give a little bit of strength to the edge of the hood. Now I'm gonna pull it off. I'm gonna transfer it onto sheet, some sheet metal and then we're gonna start uh, rolling it out. And then before we finalize our bead roll line, we'll fit the actual hood on. Uh, one more thing I'll mention is that these rods are just welding rods. I just buy them in, in uh, three foot welding rods. This is one eighth inch steel welding rod that I use for that type of uh, templating.
All right, <laughs> like have a little trouble with this thing sometimes, that rubber band, but it does work really well. We've got a bunch of the shape going into it now. Uh, I'm just rolling straight through with that rubber band. The difference between having the rubber band on the English wheel and off of it is a huge difference, okay? The, the rubber band on it makes the wheel into a two-dimensional forming tool because we're not actually stretching the metal anymore. It's actually being bent and rolled against the shape of that lower anvil. So what is happening is getting squished through here and it's only being rolled this way, right? It's just kind of bending that round shape into it. Um, so I've just been creeping up on what our actual size is. And like I've shown you, before I've just kind of marked out the radiuses and how far it is. You can see we are definitely getting there. You definitely want to creep up on this. You don't want to go too much too fast. Although, I mean, we can always, you know, make mistakes and correct them if we have to. I've left the material a little bit long here because I, I wanted to get this on to really do its final kind of measurements. Yeah, so I'm just going to keep working on this. We're going to get that shape fit as good as we can and then I'm going to have to do something about this bead roll in here. And I don't want to do the bead roll immediately. I'd like to do a test piece to know how much metal collects in the bead roll to know for sure that it's going to line up once the bead rolls in it. I'll explain more about that soon, but for now I'm just going to keep on rolling and get this hood shaped. All right, so my arms are getting sore, but we are close. The hood's fitting pretty good. Any of the roll that's in the top, I just did that with my knee. I didn't actually roll that through anything. I didn't put English wheel lines through this center flat area. Um, the only area I was doing that was right here from the four inch to the five inch radius. We were definitely getting close. That side's really good. But I'm gonna take a break on this for now. The next step would be to trim and fit this hood and, uh, and get it absolutely perfect, but uh, my arms are sore. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to making the bead roll die because I don't have this exact bead roll die. Um, I'm gonna have to make it somehow. And then the thing about bead rolling a straight line through something is that it's naturally going to want to collect a little bit of metal in the roll. So if I were to like fit this hood perfect, and mark the direct center or the direct edges of this bead roll and roll it, it would actually move because it's going to collect a little bit of material on either side to make that bead roll. So because of that, I, I know that's gonna happen. So I'm gonna have to make basically a tester piece that I'll line up to the cowl here and I'm gonna draw some marks on it and marks on the cowl. 
And when we bead roll that test line, we will be able to line the bead roll up again and see if and how far those marks have moved offset. And that measurement is how far offset we will have to mark our bead roll on the final hood. That is a learned lesson because <laughs> I've done it before. You have to bead roll a test piece first and find out how much material it collects one way or another. Anyway, that is something that I'm gonna do now is just make that bead roll die. I've got some dies that I don't actually use. These are some old original dies from my bead roller that um, this is just a step die that I, I don't ever really use this one because I like to just use my other step dies. So I'll probably uh, use this and sacrifice it and make the exact bead roll in this piece. And then I'll find another die, probably the other side to this and draw my, uh, my inside, my, or my female die from it. So um, that's my plan anyway, we're gonna have to see. I'm gonna have to template it and make sure I can get that much meat out of this. And then we will uh, do the first real job on the new bead roller. Actually, uh, it's a funny thing I'll tell you guys right now. I know I'm blabbing on. Elio was here the other night because he's making his bead roller. And uh, he was like, man, it would be nice because he does a lot of 16 gauge. I don't do a ton of it, but he does a lot of 16 gauge. So he's actually going to make a jack shaft on his bead roller that um, reduces it uh, another 40%, I believe. And that will give him a little bit more power. It'll slow down the, the final drive, um, but it'll give him that much more power. So I think that'll be cool to see when, uh, when he does that. Anyway, check out the bead roller video if you haven't seen it. We built that thing from scratch and uh, it's not done yet. We're gonna do table attachments, fences, blah, blah, blah. But um, actually a fence we'll have to make today because we're gonna want a fence to do this bead roll.
All right, so bead roller dies worked out pretty good actually. The top one doesn't actually have to have the same radius in it as the lower one. All it is really is pinching the corners. That's all I've got happening with these. Yeah, pleasantly surprised. I just kind of etch a sketch as close as I could and then proceeded to sand it. Well, it was on the lathe. And the result is a, you know, just a single pass jammed through there. I'll probably do multiple passes. I don't know. Maybe I'll do a single pass when I do the actual hood. But the body line itself looks pretty dang good. I'd say pretty spot on. So uh, very happy with that. Now I am going to proceed to fit the hood. I'm going to make the gaps quite tight because I, I think there will be more fitting to do, but I would like to sand the hood down or, or trim it down until it fits in between the cowl and where it's supposed to drop in on the hood here. So I'm going to trim that away so that I can actually get it to fit perfect, like nice and flush at both ends. That all really makes a difference. Like if the hood is up a little or down a little when we're fitting it, then this body line moves right so right now is very crucial we want to take our time make sure we get it fit really really well so i'm going to trim the edges now keep fitting the hood and then once i'm happy with it i will make a tester piece here like i said before with a couple of marks bead roll it see if the marks moved like the bead roll took up any of the material at all and uh, and if so make those adjustments when we mark out the bead on the hood and, uh, and then we'll make a bit of a fence for the bead rollers to make sure that that body line doesn't waver at all. I don't trust myself to hold it up perfectly enough. Cause you, I mean, even a few foul, you could see that. So we're gonna make a fence for the bead roller, use our homemade bead roller dies and get that bead in the hood. Okay, much fitting and trimming later. We have a hood that I am very happy with the fitment of. I've got tight gaps all the way around. Like I said, I really crept up on the size here, trimming just a little bit at a time because I wanted to make sure that there still is a little bit of room um, in case you know we're mounting things and, and um, I don't know if there's any discrepancies. Right now, I, I wanna have tight gaps that I can kind of file them perfect later. So right now, um, I'm ready to make my bead roll tester piece. This is all hugging the cowl and everything really well. I can't stress this enough that when you're fitting something like this, you don't wanna have a bunch of clamps all over it, pulling things. You wanna be able to just set it down and it to be right. I know that, you know, sheet metal is flexible. You can 
you can move it around, but it's important for the piece to be at rest and be fitting nicely. You don't want to add, you know, tensions where you don't need to. That being said, there's, you know, there's wiggle room, but um, that's just kind of what I like to do to ensure that things are not going to move. So I've, I've marked centers and allowed myself to align it to the same spot every time. That's where I'm at. I'm going to make a template of the back corner of this hood. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to make a template with this cut line, you know, kind of like that. And, um, and I'm going to make a piece and give it a little bend and make it look just like the corner of this hood and then put my bead roll in it and see if it moved the piece at all. Um, if it does, it's going to be very minuscule, but I just would hate for that bead roll to be up or down from where it's really supposed to be when the hood is aligned really nice, right? Actually, the, there's a little bit of puff still in here. That's better than that. That even changes this, right? So all those things have to be looked at now. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna probably let, like get a little bit of that out just with my hands and then we'll make this piece, bead roll it, and then do our final roll.
All right, so check these out. These pieces here are going to be essentially the sliding brackets. They're gonna go, go on like this, sorry, up here. I'm gonna drill a couple holes so that I can slide these a little bit, get a little bit of adjustment. And then I'm gonna weld a tube right here, this tube. I'm gonna cut little pieces of this, weld this tube on here. And then I'll have ready rod that can slide in and out with a bolt, or sorry, a nut on each side so that I can adjust the fence. And that'll give us a little bit of wiggle room this way to make sure that we're dead square. And the fence itself is this guy. I kind of bent a couple of little round over spots so that when our piece of sheet metal is passing through, it doesn't catch on anything. But this is gonna be able to slide right in here and kind of move back and forth with a little bit of adjustment this way. Um, that's what I'm thinking. So I just wanna give a quick thank you to KBC Tools. I know I've mentioned them on here before and it's because I genuinely buy tools from them. And uh, if some of you guys are looking for those like little things that I use, anything milling machine or, um, or otherwise bits and mills, that kind of thing. Anyway, Dave there, he called me and he said, hey, I've got a great saw, like could you use one in the shop? And to be honest, yeah, absolutely. I could totally use this saw. It's a cold saw. And uh, so basically it's like a chop saw, but a little bit more heavy duty and it doesn't use a grinding wheel. It actually uses carbide teeth. Something I've been struggling with with my bandsaw is getting the part it's actually this part right here, but in the bandsaw so that I can actually use this to lock it. I've been clamping material in the bandsaw. So thank you for this saw. He also wanted me to mention, and, uh, and I think it's worth mentioning to you guys. I used to think that these saws were really expensive and um, I haven't tried this one out yet. So I'm gonna tell you how I like it, but it looks really stout. They're 500 bucks Canadian at KBC Tools right now. He says he ordered a whole ton of them. They got a really good deal on buying a ton of these saws. So they're selling them for 500 bucks on sale for all of July. I know I'm a little bit late in the month, but if you are in the market for a saw like this, it's a really good deal. So, I mean, as long as it works as well as it, as it looks, um, yeah, that's cheap. I would have bought one myself if he didn't give me one. So thank you, Dave, much appreciated. Now I'm gonna get back to making this bead roller fence. Okay, the saw ate through this like butter, like literally butter. And uh, wow. this is S7 tool steel. This is what we make our planishing hammer dies out of. This is inch and three quarter. So I, I'm just gonna try it and just see how much it eats or if it's gonna mess up the blade or what. Let's just, let's have a, have a look. Wow, it's still cold to the touch. Like I just, I just picked that up. Look at that cut though. Like I said, like this isn't paid ads, but I mean, I got the machine for free, but like this is, that's ridiculous.
All right, I think we are ready. So we've got our tester piece here. This is my alignment line. This is my bead roll line. I'm actually using the fence. This bead roll line is actually a little bit off, but I'm just gonna use the fence to do a straight, perfect line. I've lined it up perfect at this side. I tacked on another piece of sheet metal. That's just to give me um, a bottom lip so that this piece can't fall through. Um, that's my thinking on it anyway. I don't know. Should be good to go. Okay. Moment of truth. Wow, don't mind my line, but look at how straight that is. It's just perfectly straight when we use a fence. Nice. Okay, so if I line, this is my alignment mark. If I line that back up and see exactly what I'm talking about, hopefully you can see that. It's a full 16th of an inch for sure that this is shortened, but maybe even a 16th plus a little bit. So we kind of split the difference of that and that's how far I'm gonna move my line. I'll just adjust the fence a little bit so that this bead roll is hopefully in the absolute perfect spot it can be. Well, I'm a little nervous. I don't know why, but I'm a little nervous. I don't wanna screw this up. So we're gonna do multiple passes. I'm just gonna concentrate on and focus on keeping the pressure in. Make sure my wheels are locked. Oops. Okay. Right, so far so good. Got a three quarter turn there. All right, final pass. Keeping pressure in. Nice. All right. I'm not going to call it a success yet until we get it on the car, but let's get this one. Right. Ha ha! Ha dang! Yeah! Nailed it!
All right. So stoked on how it came out. I was very finicky about it because it is so easy to make that bead roll go up or down. There is no hinge in the center, which you usually would be able to tap one way or another to kind of get things to align. We don't have that option. It's got to fit perfect the first time. So very, very happy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I mean, we did a lot. We made this piece for the bead roller that ended up working really well. This um, extra piece, I am going to take that off there. I just temporarily tacked it. Basically, my solve for that so that I don't have to do this again is I'm going to put a flat piece of plate off the bottom of here and that that way I won't need this. But yeah, very happy with the way this worked. It was very consistent. You like I ran it through three times and it was directly on the same mark all three times. So um, there wasn't any wavering or anything like that. So um, if you've got a bead roller, creating a fence is, um, it doesn't have to be special. You don't need a CNC or anything. You can just make a simple fence that will help you make straight lines like that. And then what you can do is just be confident of how straight this line is, and then this line will be that straight. That's how a fence works, so. Well, thanks a lot for watching Make It Custom, everybody. I'm really excited to get back on this car and, um, and do some more work to it. I've got some more plans. The grill, I'd really like to make a really cool split grill. I've got something I'm thinking about. Um, we've got a Duval windshield for this car. That's like an all bronze cast, beautiful split windshield. Also why I want to split the grill. I like that symmetry. Um, there's a couple other things that we're going to do to kind of keep that same theme with this car. So a lot of metal fab to come on this one. And um, a lot of you've been asking about the Zephyr. When am I going to get back on it? Well, I do really want to get back on it, but I've got a couple of things that I have to do first. And one of those things is um, I'd like to make some tools and some, uh, basically, I, I'm not happy with the body line. I'll just say it like that. I know I struggled so hard with this. I'm just gonna make this quick for anybody that wants to know. Um, there's gonna be more updates on this later, but this body line actually peaks and there's nothing I can do about it. And uh, I've seen other guys that I really respect that are doing Zephyr conversions. Menji's Twin Speed Shop on, uh, on Instagram if you want to give them a follow. Really, really amazing metal workers that just do chops and, and body modifications like that. And I can see by theirs that they probably have to run into the same issue is that that body line on a coupe has a different flow than it does on the four door. So what they do and what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the body line a little bit further back so that we don't have that peak in it. So uh, fifth time's a charm on that one, I guess. Um, but I, I am going to get back on. I'd like to get the, the front pillars welded up and a few other things. Um, the Cadillac, I've got some hydraulic lines on order for that. We want to make it lift and lower. And uh, the mini car, what's next for that is going to be the, uh, the floor structure and uh, some bead rolled panels. So I had to build the bead roller for that. <laughs> Thanks for watching Make It Custom, everybody. Much appreciated. And uh, don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. And we're going to catch you on the next one. Everybody have a great week.